Welcome back, 2024 NXL Las Vegas Major. Going down to Craig Ranch Regional Park. And Matty Marshall up here, blessed to have Todd Martinez help call this next game. New coach, new team, old name, Chicago Aftershock. Right now, speaking of a team that's been around for a long time, Le uh, Legion taking on Blast Camp. And Todd, talk about welcome to the Pro League. Blast Camp's in a bracket with Dynasty X Factor, Legion, and Diesel. event here because I mean I, we practiced against the Russians last week and you know I think the addition of Justin Rabikoff is going to be huge cars lives ready to go uh, so nice ready to go he's been uh, playing really well for them and you know they have that core adding another player that used to play with them back in the day and Justin Rabikoff uh, there's a lot of familiarity here with the Russians but last camp right now up five on two to start this first match off yeah this is a great start for blast camp Shark Karzlev uh, trying to take some ground on that D side on the break. Sergey looks like dove in there to try to save this point, but then he's going to get taken out. So it's just Kirill Pridney who's trying to do a desperation run. Makes it clean, though, out to the cam, but he's looking at a lot of bodies for Blast Camp, filtering down the field as they take some ground, getting into their snake and all the way to that crucial wedge. He's going to put the pinch, especially if they can get out a little bit wider and even not going to need to do that as Kirill gets his eye dotted. So. Hey man, Blast Camp looking real good here in this first point, Todd. Yeah, Maddie, and that's what's great about you know the first time we see a new pro team come into the league because we've seen so many, just like the team that's walking on right now in the Hurricanes. High expectations coming up from semi-pro. Hurricanes made their debut and crushed it. Made Sunday their first uh, event, uh, beat some really good teams, and you now now we're thriving here in the pro leagues. Blast Camp. You know, they're going to get their taste. They've been working to try and work their way up. Luckily, you know, fortunate for them, they were able to get a spot, even though they finished second to um, Paintball Eight. Fit. Yeah, Paintball Fit. Um, who stepped up here uh, again, earned their spot into the Pro League for the second time um, after being AC Dallas um, a couple years back. Learned some lessons, went back to semi-pro. Now they're back up again. But it's nice to see all these new faces here on the Pro Division. Hurricanes and LA Ironman, compelling stories. Hurricanes, they were so consistent, made all the Sundays and then going to World Cup and just abysmal performance there. So they're hungry for it. A little banged up again though, as uh, some injuries to some key players. Ironman completely reformed their team. Grabbed Henry Sense and Stephen O'Mara from Revo and picked up a bunch of other bodies, keeping a few around from before but a completely different look for them for the most part. Both teams aggressively pushing, and Todd, it is interesting from a strategic perspective that it does appear the first to go from the D side getting into this 40-yard line has been a pretty compelling strategic decision because those bodies are making it more than they're getting shot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, once you get in there, you have good shots across the field. You have the opportunity to deal with the snake player in front of you. Um, but, I mean, right now it looked like uh, Hurricanes really went super hard that way, almost four bodies that way, with just the back center looking this way, which allowed Kyle Nicolau to come basically straight into this snake uh, and look across the field. So I think he's got he's got Henry in the back center. Omara is in the mini wall looking across the field at the snake side. Nicolau is now able to cross, and he's going to get a shot across the field at that first big Dorito. Yeah, it's a free kill for Kyle. Looking pretty good, got that full body. There's still another body over there to deal with. He's blocked out from the pin and the wedge in the middle of the field. Uh, I think uh, Camp yep. is who he would be battling cross field, but Camp's going down the sideline. Kyle's going down the sideline. Kyle being calm though after getting that free kill, trying to let this play develop as they have the advantage as he's got four bodies behind him. But since he's in such a precarious moment, probably would uh, be beneficial to let the play develop behind him. And if you guys are just tuning in, Todd was talking about how notorious their front guys are doing work, but their back guys were dying. All the back players are alive for the Ironman, but they need to kind of follow Kyle up a little bit or get some penetration on that in that other snake. Yeah, and I think this is kind of, you know, what we fell into in that second game a little bit was we got our bodies out over there. We're trying to keep the guy out of the spot. And then, you know, we, we spend too much time in the spots, right? We need to keep attacking both sides, right? Because all the guns shift to where, you know, the biggest threat is like Kyle over here right now on the hurricane side of the field. They had literally nobody over here except for the back center. Kyle got in and now they've let somebody fill out to the corner and now uh, another body has filled out to the big Dorito in front of Kyle. Tom Guest was looking across the field. Omar was looking across the field, wasn't able to stop anybody. 
Scotty Graham looked like he was uh, doing some surgery on his gun real quick, but now he's back up and Henry Sense in that back center. But, you know, they're staying alive, but I think that they needed to make that move a little bit quicker. Omara now in the snake. He's in snake too. He's looking across the field, but those bodies are going to be harder to shoot uh, now that they've created some space. Well, hey, it's, it's point one. We're three minutes deep into this match with 15 minutes in regulation, so down to 12. But the Ironman keeping five bodies alive. Kyle's been doing a stellar job of after getting that kill. Now another kill here. Uh, as the Hurricane's dropping that body out of D2, they're trying to do a little damage control by putting a body into Snake 1, thinking to maybe run down Kyle. Kyle does have protection, but not enough. As he's going to get stitched, here comes the counterpunch, though, from the Ironman. They get the shot there in on Brown, so they got the thorn in their side. But then as that chaos goes down here, this side, the other side, here comes the Ironman attack. So the Ironman doing a good job using that boxing metaphor. The jab sets up the overhand right, which sets up the left hook. And that's the blow for bow battle going down right now. But Ironman keeping that body alive here on the attack. Going to get all the way deep here with Scotty Graham. And that's going to do it. Yeah, that was a good move for Omaro over there to get into the snake and go get camp off the field. Kind of went down on both sides at the same time. But, you know, that... uh. What's the third one? The overhand, the overhand right? Well, you got the jab, jab. so people react to that. And then you throw the overhand right, they yeah. react to that, and then you throw the left hook. Tom Guest is the left, left hook. Tom Guest is the left hook. <laughs> in the pits with the Ironman right now. Let's listen in real quick. Especially remember, on this side, that second shot is small. If you're over here, you got the lead. See, that's what we need. You need that. You got Damien and, and Kyle chopping it up right now. They won the point, but still having slight little conversations about the little variables out there. And that's when you go to a pit, that's what you want to see. Win or lose, you have to be having those discussions. We don't want to see regardless of the score, either smiles or frustration and thousand yard stares. Yeah, 100%, Manny. And now, Glass Camp running and shooting with soap out to that Dorito corner. Big man makes it out into that little Dorito. Also going hot and heavy over here onto the snake side. Blast Camp get both bodies with La Papa in snake two, looking across the field. And here come the Russians with the counter as Karzlev is gonna get pulled as he tries to go up and over. Yeah, they've been doing a good job of zone control. That's two points in a row, the only two points we've seen in this battle between these two squads where they have controlled uh, Karzlev's aggression over here on this side. Yeah, and we know that Blast Camp can shoot well on the break, right? Yes. We know that. They weren't, they weren't, they didn't get all those second places for nothing. That's you true. know what I mean? Like they yeah. were, they were a highly competitive semi-pro team. You know, and they do have athletes, they do have smart players. Um, they do have their own field, shout out to Virgil. You know, at Blast Camp's field, you know, they get to practice all the time together. So, you know, Maddie, we talk about this all the time. You know, when you build a team of guys from all over the place versus building a team of guys that are relatively close that can play together all the time, you know, there's definitely some uh, benefits to having that accessibility as yeah, well. Having everyone in the same locale it can be huge. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're trying to find the best talent you can. So if you got to fly them in, you got to fly them in when you get to the top level. But Jesus, if everyone's right down in the same area and you get to grind that much, it, it's really beneficial. So now, Jackson Frey making a move here into the snake. Yeah, and two, then two in the snake over here for Blast Camp, and two for the Russians on the other side. Well, this is how that. If you guys are just tuning in, this field has been playing like this quite a bit. Standard battle, but as one side gets blown up, a lot of times the other side's getting blown up. And now you're playing sideways, snake to snake almost. But La Papa and Frey doing their work now past the 50 yard line onto Legion's side of the field. Legion trying to do the same thing, but but it looks like Blast Camp was holding the line. They do take out D2, so just one body on an island by himself over there, Todd. It's probably gonna help that his snake or hope that his snake guys get things going and save the day. Yeah, and I didn't see Malloy walk out, and J-Rab was in there as well. So I think they still have two bodies in the snake. Yep, there's J-Rab and Snake 2, and Malloy is completely wrapped around the outside. So Jackson's, uh, Jackson Frey now zoned up on the back center. Yeah, and it looks like Malloy's gonna try and stand up and get a shot on Frey. Frey yeah. full send, doesn't make it through those guns. J-Rab and Malloy, I can't tell who the third body is over there. Yeah, Soap getting taken out as well too. So it's just one body left alive right now for Blast Camp as Legion. Sergey. Yeah, so Sergey, Malloy, and J-Rab God, what oh, year, what year, in the back center too. What year is it? <laughs> is, is it 2010 all yeah. over again? Man, I tell you, Maddie, if, I mean, 
I'm not saying no no discredit to the snake players for the Russians, but if Smotrov was here right now with uh, Kirill, Malloy, Karzlev, J Rab, and J Rab, you know. Yeah, and that's I mean underperformance last year as we're looking at this replay as Legion tied it up, so. So there's Karzlev. Yeah, they're just that's two points in a row doing a real good job at let, uh, let Lapapa have the snake by himself. Uh, well, with Jackson Frey behind him, then Papa gets taken out. And here's the finish as Jackson Frey, again, just trying to do a desperation run there on the attack, maybe catch him sleeping. Referee coming in to check out Kirill. Ooh, minor penalty. Did that pull? Okay, well, that's fine. They had a lot of bodies. Yep. So guy's like, wait, what? Who, did you get a penalty? To the Gulag. So jumping back into this next point as Body's coming off for the Ironman. Tom Guest taking the walk. Yeah, Tom Guest getting shot out of the back center, but the Ironman do make the snake. They go short on the Dorito side, but quickly get out of there. Hurricanes looking to protect this, uh, their Dorito side. Yeah, so the Hurricanes a little beat up. No paint here. And uh, Nick Ripple's playing on a broken foot. At least I was told he was going to play on it. So not Ooh. sure if he was actually able to. Another body coming off for the Ironman is Damian taking the walk. Ooh, that's not, this is not a good. Chris, Chris Tregarthen. Uh, so Zach Geiger also, I think, broke his ankle or his foot. So they called up uh, Tregarthen, who's actually wearing Geiger's jersey, to get back into the mix. Not looking good for the Ironman here in this point. Hurricane's looking like they're going to tie this one up. They yeah. do lose a body, though. Hurricane's going super hard again down that snake side, Matty. Yeah, and then also got uh, uh, Brits. Uh, and I think Brits also playing with some sort of, uh, I think, a knee injury. Yeah, I think it's his knee. So Hurricanes were banged up at the end of last year and ended up after practice sessions a little <laughs> still banged up again this year. Hurricane's really liking that uh, VIP side of the field right now as they went super hard that way both times. Yeah, no, no concession here for the Ironman. Okay, now actually just let the Hurricanes hit the buzzer. So yeah, tie ball game. Hurricanes looking good in that one. Ironman looking good in this one. This is kind of a tough one to call. So, but the Ironman having, a, I wouldn't say a brand new team because we've seen a lot of those faces before and the team is very experienced. And I like the new pickups, a huge influx of talent. Uh, but, the, and it, but the Hurricanes, as well as they did last year on paper, I think you still would have to give it to the Hurricanes, but they're so beat up with injuries, I don't know. It's kind of tough to call. Yeah, you're seeing guys kind of not playing the positions that they normally play, right? And when you lose, when you're when you're already not super deep, right? They have, they're have they talented, but they're not super deep. Yeah. Um, you know, when you lose one key guy and you got to start moving guys around, well, then you got to move other pieces around, right? Yeah, because Pate's one of their main guys. Yep. And then if, in, on a snake-heavy field, if you got a, a Nick Ripple, if he's playing, playing at like a 70%, uh, and then Britt banged up a little bit, it just it, it gets a little harder. Legion now tied up with Blast Camp. 11 minutes to go as Legion goes right into the snake again, sending another body that way with Malloy. It's the Tiger King. <laughs> there he is. He's going to come out and wrap. Soap's going to bail into the middle and come post up on this edge. He is tall enough to stand up and shoot down. And it looks like he does from a knee. Takes out the snake player from the Russians. I think that's Kuzman taking the walk, AKA the Tiger King. He had some good spins last year. Yeah. But like you said, I mean, I agree. He's Smotrov good. was here. Yeah, he's good, he's not Smotrov. Yeah. Not, not a lot of people are. So Malloy's gonna get in, dig into the snake. A Krill at the tower right beside him. Good communication from both squads. So we get the Aztec. So a good crossfield sped here for Legion. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Karzlev got into his spot over there on that Dorito side. Dorito 3's got Sergey behind him, who did a really good job working in tandem with Karzlev uh, this last weekend. Definitely saw a lot of Kirill up the middle into different spots, doing a good job of recognizing uh, where he needed to get in position to lock off a side and let his front players go to work. Yeah, so with both, so with Malloy at the crucial wedge position, their bottom of your screen, and Karzlev, top of your screen, also in the snake. 
This is a really good cross field spread and it traps Blast Camp because now they're gonna have to hope that to catch one of these guys making a mistake. They have some penetration too, middle with the wedge at the 40 and then also uh, at uh, Snake 2, but they pinch out Blast Camp's wedge. That forces a big move from, I think, Jackson. It does trade out with Karzlev, no penalty assessed. Kirill digs over to the uh, South Electronics bunker, the tower. Still one body left alive for Blast Camp, back corner bunker in D1. Yeah, Malloy still alive over here. That back small Dorito comes up over the top, not able to get Malloy out of this. Yeah, it was a little combo, because Sergey just moved into uh, into D3. Combo of his gun and uh, and Malloy. There's no way that guy's living in that back spot. Yeah. Not for long, at least. So, another point. No, 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 I know you don't know, but what I'm saying is the checkers inside. Here for Legion. We're in the pits with Legion. Some information from my excellent replay guy, Joe, saying that it looks like Legion might have shot their own guy. This is from two points ago. So we're looking at uh, Kirill Peridny. So Sergey, did Sergey shoot Kirill in the leg? Or was that some sort of, we yeah, I don't, maybe. I mean, no flinch from Kirill. So we're jumping back into this next one here with the LA Ironman and the New Orleans Hurricanes. C right tries to take the snake on the right for the Hurricanes and he gets shot on the break. Omara looking that way, Tom Guest in the back looking that way trying to help Kyle Nicolau get back over here into the Dorito three. Scotty Graham, Canada's finest junior powerlifting champion <laughs> over there on the snake side for the Ironman. He's funny too, he did some, we did uh, some Call of Duty tournaments and he co-hosted with me because he's a big gamer. He's hilarious. <laughs> he's good, he's got that, that hockey humor. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Yeah, so now reposition Kyle getting back into this spot, which is this has been a very crucial position from both sides, whether you're pushing right-handed in the snake from the red side or where Kyle currently is for the Ironman. It's just a pretty cru crucial spot on both sides. It does look like it's easier to make from the blue side of the field than it does from the red side, though. I mean, all day long, I think I've only seen maybe two guys get shot trying to make that move from the blue side. On the red side, it's more like 60-40. Yeah, don't tell Thomas Taylor that. He, he both <laughs> made it and got shot. So, okay. yeah, both. He was definitely going there. <laughs> it felt like he was in there the whole time. Yeah. No, you sh I think, I can't remember if it was the, your game or the game four, but he was getting shot going there, but he made it a, a decent amount of times. <laughs> so, yeah. I love Thomas. You know. He's still yeah. got some wheels, man. Yeah, he can run. He, he's definitely not uh, scared. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I'm not scared. Definitely not, not after 22 years in the league. He also has no nerve endings anymore on his skin. <laughs> so a uh, double stack of bodies uh, for the D side for the Ironman and the blue side. We've got Kyle and I think Tom behind him. Who's the body yep. in the snake? Did they lose that body going to snake? No, he's at the uh, mini wall still. So still five bodies alive for the Ironman. Omara jumps up into the center brick looking Dorito side. Hurricane still doubled up in that back center, but they're gonna get camp over here into the snake one. Camp looking across the field. I think that's Henry Sense making the move into the big Dorito behind the blue snake. Camp looking for some action. Well, the, the Ironmen, are the con one. they're kind of controlling the aggression right now. They got Kyle in here early. They're making moves on the top side snake as well, too. Uh, Secondary up to the middle 50 and forcing the Hurricanes to play on their heels and now losing a body out of that Aztec. Hurricanes typically real good at the slower game. That's yep. where they excelled last year. And, and, and we don't really know what the Ironmen are going to be good at yet because it's a, a brand new squad and a major penalty assessed here on the Hurricanes. And did they have enough bodies to pull? I don't think they did. 
So that's going to throw the point to the Ironman, and that was a perfect point. Maybe they lost one body. Was Camp still alive or no? I, I didn't. I don't think so. I, I, yeah, I, th I think they still had. Uh, I don't think they had enough bodies to pull in that major. Ironman taking it, and some longer points out here. Todd, only 640 left to go in this match. They're trying to keep us on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, my boy Henry Sense, he really excels at the slow game. You know, back center, chill a little bit, go to the little mini wall, hang out for a while, he came. have a snack at the big Dorito, <laughs> then crawl to the end and shoot all the rest. I'll tell you what, though, it doesn't look like he's been eating many snacks. <laughs> no, no, he, he came in a little shredded for this event. I'm like, no. man, Henry, good for you, bud. Only vegan snacks. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, once he got into that snake, chickpeas and... Yeah. Chickpeas, him... Well, Scotty Graham got him on that Canadian gluten-free diet, right? But Henry went to, the, went to the Big Dorito, dove into the snake, crawled all the way down, and once they shot that back center guy, the other dude came to trade with him, made that trade, and guy got a penalty, and game over, right? Yeah. Slow, methodical point. Well, and that's the thing that you're you know, talking about, a guy that's had a lot of time in this league, and they have a decent amount of, of, I wouldn't say, they're not hardcore veterans. Henry and Omar are definitely are at this point. But some of these other guys, they've spent some years in this league now. So it's just who's going to be playing what position, how often, and how are they all going to play together. But the future is very bright for this new Ironman squad. Last camp losing a body here off the break. 8.33 to go. One point lead for Legion. Legion on the blue side. Last camp on the red side. Ooh, major penalty going to be assessed here on Legion. That's going to open the door for Blast Camp. That's going to pull out. Did they just, just pull three bodies, Todd? Uh, it looked, there's definitely they, four bodies walking off. They might have pulled three. So we were talking gross major here. What's going on? Didn't see exactly. Maybe maybe the oh. other, other body died and he got to him. You know when the ref gets to a guy and he just died, so they got to go pull someone else? Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe. Oh, well, he just, the ref definitely ran over to the head judge like he wanted to. Have tell mom that his sister was eating the glue stick again. <laughs> yeah, it came with the quickness. Uh, I swear, <laughs> I swear she did it. Well, Blast Camp being extra careful here on this close. I, I mean, I get it. I mean, so many, when the bodies come off that quick, and you're, especially if you're looking the opposite way and you turn around, all of a sudden you see multiple bodies walking off. Got to be careful because you're tying it up against Legion. Yeah, four bodies, four bodies at once. You're like, this can't be real. Point's good. Yeah, so. Got to figure it out. John Eckard being safe out there and intelligent and going to tie this one up. No, no, it said that money was deflated, meaning forward. In the pits right now, this new pro team, Blast Camp. Cody, how did it work? So the money was deflated, meaning forward, and you just got one over. That's on me. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, dude, that's bullshit. As soon as you said, as soon as you said, I heard you guys say snake, and then as soon as you said they got a penalty, I just pulled that over. You're going snake off the break every point. Every point they go snake off the break. Yeah, what I'm saying is, as soon as he said it, and then someone said they got a major, I just called me out. Jack, I should have done it. Okay, Jack, go paint with the bio. When I was dead, I died. They called me a guy, they showered up, and I did. And Troy got a penalty. I got a major, so one, two, three, there's only one. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. They got a gross major. The home player got shot. They only pulled three. Hey, two, two, next point. Two, two, next point. Jackson, I traded with the home. I got pulled out. I traded with the home. It's okay. I, I trade for you. Here. No, no, you I think we, we can make the. Are you shooting at me? Right we can make that. Okay. Nobody is shooting. Go here. Go here and shoot. The who's gonna shoot? Who's gonna shoot right there? Because they're fucking snake. I'll have Eric shoot that door. No, we need someone. I'll have Cody delay here. Okay, so we're going one, two, three, two, three. I think I. Big John Iannucci helping doing the coaching duties. So just a little public service announcement. Probably shouldn't get in a team fight with Blast Camp. <laughs> nah. Big John's a big dude. Uh, good to see him back in the game. It's uh, kid's cop now, so he, he's, uh, John Jr. definitely wants to come back, but, you know, like Damien had to take some time off to become a sheriff. Takes a little bit of time, and then you get back in the mix. But uh, but you know, I love what this. I love what we're hearing in Blast Camp's pit. Everyone's talking. Everyone's having complex conversations about all the different variables out there. That is exactly what you want to see. Good. Hey guys, we're we're really driving this game right. We're driving every fucking point, boys. Hey, this is the point right here. This is the this is the swing. This is the swing. 
The blast camp pit uh, definitely passes the vibe check for sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we just talked about having, you know, some veteran leadership in your locker room. And John Iannucci, you know, he's, he's coached some teams now here. Coached Aftermath, um, coached, was the other team, Aftershock? Was it Aftershock yep. at the end there for yep. a little bit? Yep. But, I mean, has some experience, right? Obviously been in this game for a minute. It's nice to have, you know, some uh, good perspectives that can bench 550, <laughs> you know? Deadlift a car. Yeah. So, sounds like uh, Jason Trozen's probably doing a review down below just to make sure that they got that call right because that, that gross major was pulled on. Did you see it? I didn't see any paint, but I wasn't yeah. looking directly at him when it happened either. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Uh, but yeah, we could hear uh, word on the uh, word in the pits was that it was a gross major. So, our commissioner Jason checking it out, and everyone's just kind of waiting in the wings, to see what the outcome of that situation is going to be as it stands. You got a uh, right now though, Ironman and Hurricanes about to jump into this next one. Ironman look pretty good through three. Uh, Hurricanes, obviously one on the board there, but the Ironmen have been the ones dictating the pace and the tempo of the game, and that's a good sign. Hurricanes going straight to the Dorito three, but losing one body. Nick Ripple making that big run, but losing camp off their snake side. Ironmen get Scotty Graham short on the snake side, but then jumps out to that snake side corner. Omara again on the cross. Henry Sent's going to fill out Snakeway. Tom Guest in the back. Nicolau on that Dorito side playing heads up. Ripple over here in Dorito 3 for the Hurricanes. Going to look across the field, see if he can stop that movement from Nicolau. Nicolau's been able to go wherever he wants over there on that Dorito side for the Ironmen. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle's looking really good right now. I can see why they're giving him a start. And now they're just uh, with the, uh, they have a slight lead. They're, I don't want them to just sit in these bunkers. I mean, whatever team it is, it doesn't matter. It's just the principle, right? You go up a couple points by doing things pretty well. And then so let Nick Ripple, they do lose Bell. And then now attack in the middle, Hurricanes. So Ripple in a good spot. Also, they have a body in the middle. Look, Stuart Ridgell's hunting for it right now. Ridgell, is his stock and trade is being the bruiser for the Hurricanes up the middle field. He could get a big run through. He's going to get one. He's going to come through. He's going to get two. He's about to get bunkered. Ooh, Ridgell got to be careful not to get a penalty, though. He did get three. No, two. He got two. And unfortunately for him, everyone else died around him. He would have gotten three and four if Tom Guess hadn't scooched in just at the right accident. time. Just at the right Spidey time. Spidey senses were tingling for yes. Tom Guess. Yes, because then he probably wouldn't have switched. I would have had an extra one there, and that would have been your move of the day for sure. Five hundred dollars. I was I was about to write Stuart Ridgell down. Five hundred dollars. And though that was nice, but a, not as good as some of the other ones we've seen. Yeah, so let's get a look here at this major and see what type of gross major we're talking about here. How flagrant are we about to see? Oh, so it's Sergey. All right, so left elbow. And then a nice little slide. Uh, my client... Uh... <laughs> Is he pleads the fifth? To, Does he plead the fifth? It's kind of non-conclusive evidence <laughs> over here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get away with it. Two to two is the score, and they did start with five, though. Luckily, they had all those bodies to pull, but they did lose uh, had a little karma, two off the break, and they're going to lose that third with J-Rab taking the walk. So just two bodies left alive right now for Red Legion. Seven minutes to go, blast camp with a big high body moment. Needs to be able to finish this one off and actually just going to get a concession from Legion. So they're going to take a slight lead. Good looks for Blast Camp so far, man. They definitely came into this one pretty hungry. Blast Camp is looking like a team that's got their own field. They are running and shooting everywhere. They're not scared to do it. They're letting it ride. They look like they've been doing their drills heavy, hot and heavy out here. They got good practices. Where did they go again? They went to... Uh, I think it was uh, Houston with Heat mm. and the Bears. Good right? practice. That's yeah. So good, good practice. practice. You know, and the Bears down. look good too. So right? that makes sense. You know, come back uh, home, hit some drills super hard, be confident in your game, be confident in doing what you want to do. And now they're up three to two. They're not. They're 
their energy is not getting diminished by the magnitude of the moment. Definitely. They're coming into this one knowing, okay, look, uh, PB Fit beat us at every single event last year. They earned the right to be here. We buy our way in. But we're still a really good team. Let's make the most of this situation and prove to the world we deserve to be here. And you can, you can feel that intensity coming from the pits. And they happen to be in a bracket of death. I mean, when, you know, it's like, careful what you wish for. Yeah. And they, they end up in a bracket with Dynasty, X-Factor, Legion, and Diesel. That's, no a, that's a nasty bracket. But again, if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. You got four of them all in the same bracket together. Now, Diesel only made one Sunday, but look at that roster. It's a nasty roster. I don't think it'd surprise anyone if they started playing better and started making more Sundays. But still, it's just, I'm again, we're just getting things kicked off for Blast Camp's pro uh, journey, yeah. but I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm definitely liking what I'm seeing. They're, we're in Vegas, you know, nothing to lose. First event, right? They're playing their hearts out, right? They're giving, it, they're giving the Russian Legion everything that they got right now. Absolutely. So, you like to see it. I do, I, well, that's what I, you know, because people are like, well, what happens when the Dynasty guys retire? What happens? I mean, we played one day, we retired, here yeah. we are doing this, <laughs> and coaching and, and calling games. But it's next team up, next man up, next kid up, next, whatever it is. And it, there's, when you look at this fact that this is the, the biggest non-World Cup event the NXL has ever had, I think we are in a bit of a new paintball golden age, so. Yeah, you like to see it. Oh, Nikolau finally gets picked up, trying to make his move up and over to that Dorito three. I think it might have been from the back center, but Camp made a move from the back center up and over to the snake, got in clean, and now he's in snake two looking across the field. He's going to shoot out Tom Guest. Tom Guest can exit from the backside. Just three bodies left alive now for the Ironmen. <laughs> Whoever for the Ironmen is in the back center is just murdering paint right now. I think he's just spraying uh, bunkers, uh, balls off that Hertz bunker. Just, <laughs> just a blender. <laughs> he's definitely blending. So is Omara, too. Yeah, they weren't before. <laughs> They're winning this game. I don't know. Did they put a new batch in or something? Or They switched the 50 cals. <laughs> 280 cal, 250 cal. 250 cal. 250 cal. Yeah, so... Uh, Good. That's a. This is a solid gut check moment for the Hurricanes. Ironmen were dic dictating the pace of this game. There's only four minutes left to go. If the Ironmen win this one right here, that could be curtains for the Hurricanes. But they tighten it up, make some nice crisp moves, get some kills, help the Ironmen break in a little bit of paint, and now we got a game. Yeah, I'll give it to Coach Mike too. I, th I feel like he's throwing the kitchen sink at it right now too. And we've seen we've seen camp on both sides of the field. Yeah. He's just up and over to everywhere. Right? We yeah. saw Nick Ripple get a spin. We've seen um, Stuart Ridgel, you know, doing his thing. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, we're in the pits right now. I, just, I love Mike Bianca. Mike Bianca is a solid gold dude, a follower of the Stoic philosophy, and uh, he's totally fine when things aren't going well. He'll get more intense, you know, just like anyone, right? But he doesn't freak out because freaking out doesn't make that doesn't make it better for anyone. Doesn't make it better for you. You just get more angry and frustrated. Doesn't make it better for everyone else around you. So I just love this the stoic way. I mean, he'll get intense, and it will be dramatic. But yeah, a great leader for that squad, and he has thrown the kitchen sink at it. So and the guys are stepping up here to make this a game. Now jumping into this one here, Blast Camp up over Legion. This would be a big upset, but dropping some bodies. Ooh, not a good break here at all for Blast Camp, losing three very quickly, as Cars Levs all the way onto Blast Camp side of the field and just eating people up. Yeah, cars left and Sergey over here just both standing up over the top looking for that middle guy. And the last body's gonna come walking off. And that's where, you know, you go up against a good a team like Russian Legion who can shoot well on the break. You know, you do a lot of running and shooting. You know, they're gonna pick up on that eventually and you know they're gonna catch it sometimes. So yeah. they well, lost a couple bodies early. I think was there a penalty? I think maybe one penalty, and then those filler guys got chopped up really quick. So 3-3 three three will be the score with 6-18 still on the clock. And uh, impressive, you know, the fact that we're this close. So it does look like Sergey talking to his former coach. And he gave me, like, I try cheat. My question, when I run to back center, to small bunker, why he not send me out? What's that? You know, you know what I'm saying is, it's your job. I, I know, I know, but I'm wrong. I don't know. Hey, you know, I just try. This is out. This is fancy, but not like one to three. 
Two my minutes. from when I watched the replay. Okay. When I watched the replay, it went like this. Bro. Okay. It went like this. You went like this. Okay. okay. And then you ran and slid. Why out. nobody nobody pulled me like out? Why didn't you call yourself out? Bro, because I don't I don't feel. You felt it. No. Then why'd you go like this? <laughs> oh I love those conversations. Yeah, Jason Trozen, you know, he he uh, runs night court, you know, in his time off over here when he's not the NFL. He's earning his money out here. So Hurricanes send Camp again. Camp been doing a pretty good job getting into this spot. And a couple bodies coming off for the Ironman early. Yep, here comes Omara. Camp now on the Ironman side of the field. Problem for the Ironman is I don't think they know he's there. C right stepping up behind Camp. Camp up over the top. He gets Damian Vasquez. Tom Guest, nowhere to go for him in the back center. Henry Sense, last body to come off. Past couple points, Hurricane's been looking really nope, good. Nope, that's not Henry. That is... Damien. Damien Vasquez. Nope, that was Mitch uh, Finley. Oh, okay. Yeah, Damien was already dead. Yeah. Mitch Finley of the Canadian Trio. And also remember that Chris is wearing Geiger's jersey. There's the Stoic himself, like hey guys, Bianca. Hey, come on. Come on, Sue. It's what champions do. Let's go. Get in here. Clean the barrel for me, please. Hey, get your gun and tank cleaned up. Give me that. Hey, hey. Make sure there's nothing oh, broken in the hopper, too. Hey. hey. Let's go, let's go, Good execution. Go. Great execution. Way to shoot the red. We knew they were going to go red. Well done. That got us the penalty. Get it out of Drew's pocket. Hey. Got one. I think they got three minutes. They, they're not deviating. The only thing they did was they shot him. Let's play him five alive. Let's play him five alive, boys. So hey, same line. Same line. I think I'm good. I just it. If you need a point, let me know now. I'm good. Okay. You're just wondering how much uh, so, Nick's going to be playing that on that line. broken foot. In fact, he's even suited up and playing. Tough dude. Yeah. They are going to secondary. Broken foot's no joke. At 100%. Especially when you're trying to play competitive sports. Oh, well, running. That's the first attack. Standing. Right where he goes, right where he goes. I had a load right there. I couldn't hold it. He's probably eating 800 milligrams of ibuprofen every four hours. 100%. Go back to base. So we're going to basically, we got time. So basically, look, get our guns up. Here, here, here. Okay. Who is Mr. Cogger? All right. So who was my line on that last one? Was Daniel? Bailey, Stu, Drew. Bailey will be C right. Hurricanes look really focused too, Todd, because they do not want to repeat of their World Cup performance. No. As banged up as they are, too, fighting through adversity here. Camp's playing really well. well you know, when you don't have all your guys, you can try and be more prepared. You can be more focused. You have to minimize your mistakes. And you got to play hard. The guys got to step up. All tied up here. 3-3, three, three, the rookie pro team, Blast Camp against the Legends. Red Legion, Blast Camp doubling up that back center and then going to delay all the way into that D side snake. We're getting into the snake from the D side. Ooh, that guy finally got shot. So Legion doing a real good job of zone control in that crucial position as most of the bodies trying to make that move have been able to make it in there clean and that has been a big difference maker regardless of the team we're talking about. It's been a big part of the strategy on this layout here in day one. Yeah, Blast Camp gave up their body that was holding the lock on the snake. He popped up, went and dove into the big Dorito on the snake side. As soon as he did that, Malloy looked around the corner and now he's in there, snake three. Malloy, he's gonna be able to wrap this thing probably pick up Jackson Frey over there. Jackson actually knows he's there now. That's why he bailed out. Yeah, Kirill getting up into his tower. He likes this move. Tiger King hitting the deck, crawling up into Snake 2. Kuzman. Danny Kuzman. So good looks in the Snake on the Snake side here for Legion. And they also have Karslev in his spot, opposite side of the field at that 40-yard line wedge. He's got bodies in, or a body in front of him, though. His blast camps in Snake 1. Here comes Malloy. He's past the 50 right now, dodges the stream. 
And Rapsron trying to put pressure on that Aztec. If he head checks back inside, he's gonna get a free kill cross field here, Todd. But it looks like that body's gonna get eaten up by Karzlev. Maybe Sergey. Not gonna matter though, as those are the last couple bodies for Blast Camp. So Legion gonna take a slight lead for probably 25-ish by the time Loy hits that buzzer. On the button there. Yeah, good job there by Malloy. Recognizing that the snake lane was open, took it, created space for Kuzmin to come in behind him. And uh, continuous pressure from Sergey and Karzlev. I'm just glad we got a good game here. I'm glad Blast Camp brought their best yeah. to this uh, inaugural pro adventure for them. Two good games. Yeah, really. two, yeah, two good games, too. I mean, we knew that Hurricanes and Ironman, with the Ironman new roster, as hungry as they are to not be bottom tier, and then how good the Hurricanes and how consistent they've been, even beat up. Figured that would be a decent game. And we knew the Blast Camps, they're a good paintball team. Uh, but I didn't know if they had this, you know? I mean, they're playing Legion with Legion getting J-Rab, and that lineup's pretty nasty. Yeah. So. Well, you know, you create your own identity, right? And right now, Blast Camp, saying we're going to go at these guys, right? The Russians have just done a good job of picking up their snake guys, being aggressive themselves, and you know, really keeping the uh, attack from the snake side of Blast Camp at bay. Uh, you know, They shot the guy coming over here last time and just continuing to press on both sides of the field. There goes to the Dorito side on the break. It looks like C Wright's going to get taken out, but the Ironmen are going to get shot. They're going to lose Nikolau and get a penalty. Tom Guest is going to come walking off. So just three bodies for the Ironmen. Nobody over here on the snake side. Yeah, Todd, the Ironmen held up, held up short. They did shoot a body, so the heavy guns did work out, and they are going to dip into the snake. But that penalty cost them an extra body. So down to just three, three on four situation in favor of the Hurricanes here in this another tie game with 2:32 left to go. And yeah, sorry, Maddie, it's no bodies on the Dorito side for the Ironmen. Um, Henry Sens is in that Hertz bunker in the back center, just hammering this way. There's nobody in the snake, but Henry's playing it like they are already in snake three, which allows Camp to fill out to the snake corner. And he's now going to wrap, put it right back in on Henry, the Ironman, depending on Omara over there in snake one to get some kills. But Omara really needs to turn that corner and get down the field because the Hurricanes don't have anybody that far up over there on their Dorito side. Yeah, the, this is one of those situations where I think the Hurricanes know they're up a body and they know they're in a good spot, but they need to, or maybe they don't, because they're zoned up. I mean, it's I a tie like, game. I, yeah, I feel like they're, it's a tie game, so you know, crucial situation, but they're kind of zoned up like they're still enemies in front of them, yeah. and there's no one on this side. So maybe they didn't see that other body filter off on the penalty. Yeah, and I actually think that's Mitch Finner again over there on that snake side for the Ironman as he comes up to snake two and looks across the field, but nobody keeps an eye on Drew Bell. Drew Bell sneaks into the Dorito 2. Dorito 3, second big Dorito. Yeah, we're calling there. it D3. And now he's gonna stand up. Mitch gonna try and pop the top on him. Henry's looking over here towards the Hurricane Snake side still. Gotta protect his back. He hasn't been able to bump out. 60 seconds on the clock, 3-3 three, three game. Hurricanes going for it right now as they get into the snake three. Henry's gonna need to make a big shot over here unless Mitch can get a shot across the field. Okay, Hurricanes uh, crawling up in pretty good, they're in position to try to dictate this one because this, their snake side, Ironman's D side, completely blown open. It's just, can they get through these guns? And there's only really two guns to get through. They are gonna shoot out that back center as Henry Sense is gonna take the walk and here comes Bailey. Bailey taking the pressure, and here comes, I was gonna say the hammer about to be dropped and not even need to get dropped as they can pinch out that back corner bunker. Scotty Graham, last player left alive, so with just 21 seconds left to go. Penalty killed him. Yeah, that penalty killed him. The penalty killed him. And Maddie, so in that situation, it's about a buck 45 on the clock. You know, I think the game started with, what'd you say, 224? Yeah, right, right? Like They get a penalty right away. You either have, you have to attack right away, right? Especially on this layout? Yeah. Well, they they, right, I mean, they, they kind of tried, but it wasn't right away. It was maybe 30 seconds later, but they made their moves on that, on the, uh, to try to push the snake side, because the D side's blown. They, they don't have anyone over there. They only have bodies on the snake side, their snake side. So then they throw some bodies that way, 
Uh, yeah. But the Hurricanes, it took, look for a second, I thought they might squander the opportunity because they were posted up, like there was still an enemy in front of them, but I think they, they, they figured it out real quick. So kind of a veteran play there by the Hurricanes to close it out with just 20 seconds left too. Yeah, I think Mitch needed to make that attack sooner and try and go down that Dorito side, or yeah. their to, snake side. To force the issue. Have the chance, yeah. Yeah, jumping back into this one, Legion with just a slight lead. A little bit more time left in this one with 413 still on the clock, but, uh, clock, but Blast Camp is just, man, I'll tell you what, I'm impressed by what we're seeing out of Blast Camp. Oh, Kirill tries to come through, goes all the way to the end of that center structure, tries to come through, but doesn't look like he gets anybody. Still five bodies alive, but trying to come across into the snake. Blast Camp's going to lose a body, give it right back. Double move over here on the Drito side for the Russians as Karzlev and Sergey get into position. So 3.37 now to go is... Last camp crawling into the snake. Bodies have dropped for both squads. Looks like two bodies coming off for Legion. Legion with Karzlev. Karzlev gonna hit the deck and crawl up. Does he know that there's a body right in front of him? If he touches that bunker, he's gonna give him away, and he does. Triple tapped on the back. Karzlev gonna be forced to walk off. Those are the worst. Those are the blood welts right in the spine. And he's gonna get that kill, so who is this for this little papa? No, it's Hogue. Hogue earning his keep, man. Trying to tie this one up for Blast Camp. Two bodies over here. Nobody for the Russians. Malloy's going to try and work his magic. Not able to do it this time. Good containment. Malloy. Legendary in low body situations. Not gonna happen for this one though, is Blast Camp. Man, Blast Camp. They haven't won this game yet, Todd, but they look pretty legit. Yeah, they're not giving up. You know, back you know, for the past couple of years we practiced those guys a lot and you know they believe in themselves and confidence is a big a big thing here when you're playing professional paintball. You know, these guys they want the challenge, you know, they're willing to fight. They got a good group of guys. They lost Hogue for a year, got him back. I think he was one of the crucial pieces uh, to their success, you know, to their you know, team chemistry. So. so crucial moment for this rookie pro team here. We're in the pits with Blast Camp. They are tied up with this legendary squad, team that are proven winners. Let's see what the vibe's like. Well, Ironman have 21 seconds to work with, and we're looking for a full court press right here. So they spread the bodies out wide to try to spread those guns. Hurricanes tucked in their spots, trying to stay alive and do not get any penalties for the Hurricanes. And then here comes the attack from the middle. Running out of time though, just five seconds left. No one on the Ironman should be alive when this time expires. Mighty attempt, but it will be for naught as the Hurricanes will chalk up their first win. A hard fought battle from the Ironman. It, they were, they started, in, in, Todd, they started this one out really well. Ironman were the ones dictating the tempo and the pace of this match. Some mistakes early for the Hurricanes, but they clocked in and ended up securing this victory. Yeah, good adjustments for the Hurricanes. Again, it seemed like Mike Bianco was just throwing bodies everywhere, throwing, like, listening to their conversation in the pit, it felt like he had a good grasp of what the Ironmen were trying to do. And um, you know, it really seemed like he understood that they really wanted to come down the Dorito side and were playing that snake side rather slowly. So, you know, he took a different look at where he was sending his attack, started coming to that snake side a little bit more, um, but still different bodies to different places. And, you know, at the end of the day, they got it done when it really mattered. And it was in that tie game, um, you know, with under a minute to play, they made the moves and the Ironman did not. Let's see if Blast Camp can shock the paintball world here and win their first pro match against this legendary Legion lineup. As Malloy hits the deck, crawls up into Snake 2 with two minutes and seven seconds left. Blast Camp holding the line. 
much more conservative break for Blast Camp. Took a little bit of ground, getting to that South Electronics bunker. But it is a full court press right now for Legion. Into D3, Malloy into Snake 2. He's got J-Rab right behind him. They're also posted up at the tower. There are no bodies in the back bunker, any of the back bunkers for Legion. Everyone is on their toes looking to push forward right now. Yeah, Legion's definitely been here before. Malloy stands up over the top, shoots Jackson Frey out of the middle of the field, and then takes Snake 3. They're going to lose Kirill. They're going to lose Karzlev, though. So two bodies have dropped for Legion. Still three bodies out there alive. It's a four on three situation in favor of Blast Camp. They have a minute and 18 seconds left to work with. They just need one more kill. If they can get, if they can get shoot Karzlev off that, uh, off that, that D side for them, out of the snake, the wedge, that would be huge. But he's tucked into that spot, hiding from the sideline. And only looking at one gun shooting his way. Blast Camp in that snake corner, playing heads up. Could see an overtime point here, Todd. 53 seconds on the clock. J-Rab gets to his feet. Oh, how did here they let Malloy. Malloy? How did they let Malloy through that gap? Malloy, just uh, the magician, ninjas his way through that gap and stays alive. He's going to get some help. Back player right behind him. Uh, maybe crossfield shot. Sergey does die from that that other side though. So it was Sergey in that spot. Another body coming off for Blast Camp. Blast Camp getting chewed up, trying to get in. Malloy's trying to win this one here. Just one body left alive on the field, and he gets taken out. So it's J-Rab and Malloy. We're going to be the heroes in this point. And look for J-Rab to pump the brakes and wait for that clock to tick down. Looks like a concession from Blast Camp. Going to leave 17 seconds on the clock to try to summon some sort of last-ditch effort with barely any time on this clock. Man, that was a... that It looked like Blast Camp had a chance for a second, but Legion, their offense worked out great. They were in all the spots, and I don't know how they let, they were posted on Malloy. How they let Malloy jump from the wedge into their D3. Yeah. Just like Neo in the Matrix somehow just has a force field out there sometimes. Yeah, and they got some kills off that Dorito side too. They, they, had, they had the four on three advantage, and the Russians just kept coming. The Russians didn't stop, they just kept coming, and Blast Camp, uh, just couldn't capitalize. So there's Malloy. So he guns up and puts it in, or puts that guy in. But then how, look, if, if you're going to get put in like that, still shoot your gun on that gap. I don't know if anybody else saw that spray that came when Malloy had his first engagement, but the referee was right there. It looked like something sprayed off. If they would have got him in, when he first came into there, I think that was their only chance because he just went to work after that. Yeah, and had J-Rab right behind him. Yeah. So here it is Watch again. Let's look. Comes. Where's the spray? Do you see? Do you see spray? Right there? Mm, that might have been off the bunker. Off the front of it, yeah. Yeah, might have been off the front of that bunker. But yeah, if you're in that, if so, if you're at the mini wall and you get put in, you don't need to do that drastic. Just come, just come in enough so you're you're safe and pump that lane because you know there's barely any time left. He's putting you in to go. In the pits right now with Legion. I don't speak Russian, so I have no idea what they're saying. Do you need me to translate? Yeah, translate for me, Todd. All right, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> We're winning. They're wearing orange clothing. We're Russians. They're not. We let it fly. The secret to that last one was the aggressive play call for Legion. Blast Camp held up. So they played defense. Legion plays offense. Legion makes their spots. And after that, proper execution for Legion. It got a little chaotic, as it always seems to do. But they had the right guys in the right spots. Yeah. And then J-Rab and Malloy just muscled their way down this side. You know, and could... Uh, could that Blast Camp player try to dive into the, you know, the snake over here in front of Malloy, right? They had that extra body. Could he have come in here? Got rid of Malloy. Possibly, possibly. You know, put J-Rab over here by himself. Or made J-Rab then pump his brakes a little bit. Will I have to deal with them? It's just one of those things. If you're going to play defense, you got to make your shots. Always. Always, always, always. 
And if Malloy is gunning up and edging out to put you in when barely any time on the clock with the back guy right behind him, if you go in, shoot the lane. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's uh, we're going to get a chance to see Blast Camp's quick point quick play. play. Here. Yeah. What is Blast Camp's quick play? About to find out. Almost no time to work with. 17 seconds. So we've seen very many 17 second points throughout the years. We have not seen a 17 second point on this layout. I don't really know what the quickest point you can score so far. We've seen some quick points, but it's been like two bodies on the break, another, and then like a major, and it can something like that. Yeah. But not an actual five on five, full on, no penalty, anything under maybe 25, 30 seconds. So here it goes. Last camp with the full send. Bodies out wide to draw the guns. Ooh, penalty assessed here on Legion, and Sergey gets shot in the back. They got a chance, five seconds left. Still two bodies to shoot. I don't think they're gonna be able to do it. Maybe if they had another 10 seconds, might have had a chance. The penalty opened up the door, but just to crack, just slightly, not able to capitalize, and Legion holds the line. And it takes a slight one-point victory here over the Rookies Blast Camp. Man, we've got some, had some close games out here today. So do not go anywhere. Number one team in the world for the past four years or so, basically since after the COVID break, San Diego Dynasty taking the field. See how Danny Schonauer does for him. Arturo was lights out for him in practice. No Blake Yarber here, and congratulations to the Yarber family having a baby. And they're taking on AC Diesel. This could be a really good one. And then Damage is playing Notorious. Three more sets to go here. Day one of the prelims. 2024 NXL Las Vegas Major. Here on Go for tuning in. I'm Matty Marshall. I'm Tom Martinez. We'll be right back.